Malaysia Airlines went from having a loss of $173 million to making a profit of $125 million. Based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia Airlines hopes to finish getting back to normal in China and North Asia this year. In fact, the airline thinks that by the end of 2023, capacity across its network will be back to where it was before the pandemic. The reason for the excitement is that its parent company, Malaysia Aviation Group, just had one of its best quarterly financial performances in the last 20 years. This is a great return to making a lot of money. The Malaysia Aviation Group's finances took a big turn for the better last year. An operating profit of about $125 million was a big change from the operating loss of $173 million in 2021. Even though petrol prices went up, wage costs went up, and the currency got weaker, the company started making money again. Even though the number of flights was much lower last year than it was before the pandemic, Malaysia Aviation Group was still profitable because of strong demand, higher yields in both passenger and cargo business, and excellent cost management combined with cash flow optimization. Profits for the whole year were also helped by improvements in every other area of business. Even though global freight demand slowed a bit, Malaysia Airlines' overall income went up compared to 2021. This was because foreign demand for both commercial passenger travel and cargo freight was higher than in 2021. Malaysia Airlines has come back in a big way. The Malaysia Aviation Group couldn't give numbers, but it did say that the flag carrier served about 9.9 .9 million people last year and will only serve 1.7 million people in 2021. The number of passengers rose from 46% to 75%. Capacity to certain places has also been increased. With the help of Qatar Airways, Malaysia Airlines has added a second daily direct flight between Kuala Lumpur International Airport and Doha Hamad International Airport. This helps Malaysia Airlines link to more places in North America, Europe and Africa by making its network bigger. The One World Alliance member is now running at 85% of its capacity before the pandemic. By the end of June, it hopes to be back to full capacity in China and North Asia. It thinks that the network will be back to full performance by the end of this year. Still, Firefly is very far behind. Most of Malaysia Aviation Group's businesses were doing well, but its low-cost division Firefly could not say the same. The airline didn't make any money at all last year, because both the yield and demand for ATR and Jeff flights were down. On the other hand, the group isn't too worried that the low-cost carrier is falling behind. You don't need to worry because, according to the Malaysia Aviation Group's Long-Term Business Plan 2.0, Malaysia Airlines will give all intra-East Malaysia services to the low-cost airlines starting on May 16th. This means that the flag carrier will only fly between East Malaysia and Peninsular Malaysia as well as within Malaysia. On these new international routes, Firefly will use Boeing 737-800s and offer flights every day. Malaysia Airlines used to only fly two to five times a week on those same planes. The low-cost carrier's daily trips show a big increase in capacity, which is likely to lead to more money coming in. After a few rough years, it's good to see that most of the Malaysia Aviation Group, especially Malaysia Airlines, is making money again after years of losing money. Even though it is behind right now, low-cost unit Firefly could turn things around this year. The group is optimistic about this year and is also looking for ways to boost demand in Malaysia. It also plans to get four of the 25 Boeing 737 MAX 8s in the third quarter of this year. This shows how exciting 2023 will be for the group. To be more specific, Malaysia Airlines has shown off its remodeled Boeing 737-800NG cabin as part of its continued efforts to be more environmentally friendly. The new cabin is supposed to be more luxurious. The seats are light and don't have in-flight entertainment screens, which will help reduce the overall weight of the plane. Because of this, it is expected that the 737 plane with the revised cabin will use 8% less fuel per passenger, which will lead to a smaller carbon footprint. The flag carrier says that the refreshed 737s will take to the air by the end of July 2022. As more of the 38 restored planes are finished, they will be sent to other local and regional destinations. The new leather seats have a blue color scheme that makes the area look brighter than before. The batik pattern on the upholstery and drapes shows off Malaysia's rich history. Malaysia Airlines still uses the 737 as its main plane for domestic and regional trips. That lasts less than four hours. 
Before the new 737-8 jets arrive next year, the current fleet of 737-800 next-generation planes is getting a makeover. Malaysia Airlines Group Chief Marketing and Customer Experience Officer Lau Yin Mei said, We're excited to roll out the newly remodeled B737-800NG. It will change the way people travel in the future with its new seats and highly customizable in-flight entertainment. While staying true to our roots by incorporating Malaysian elements into the overall interior cabin design, the cabin refurbishment exercise started in 2021. This was a bold move by the airline in response to feedback and suggestions received in 2020 through customer surveys and various focus group sessions to better understand our customers' needs. This shows that Malaysia Airlines is committed to adapting to changing consumer needs and improving the overall customer experience in the post-pandemic era. We are excited to say that our in-flight entertainment is a game-changer, with award-winning local and foreign films and TV shows as well as in-flight shopping. All of this is done to show our customers how warm and friendly Malaysia Airlines is when they fly with us. Putting sustainability at the center of everything we do is becoming more and more important. Our refreshed B737-800NG fleet's all-new features will reduce our carbon footprint by making each plane lighter, she said. Lighter seats, soft cabin diviners, and getting rid of seatback screens to replace them with new in-flight entertainment features that allow wireless streaming on board at the customer's convenience are all examples of this. New Boeing 737 Business Class Malaysia Airlines Business Class still has two seats across from each other but now there are only three rows instead of four. This means that there are 12 places in total. The airline seems to be using Zafran's Z600 reclining seats, which have a unique cradling motion kinematic and a six-way movable headrest. The 10.6-inch LED screens have been replaced with a stand for your phone or tablet that you can use without your hands. As shown above, you can tilt the holder to keep the right angle even if the person in front of you leans back in their seat. The new business class seats have a tray table that is one piece and goes into the armrest. Each person traveling in business class gets their own AC power outlet that can be used with a range of foreign plugs. There are also two USB-A ports and one USB-C port that can each output 15 watts. The new remodeled interior also stands out because it has a soft cabin divider instead of a hard bulkhead to separate business and economy class people. Even though this might make it harder to talk to people in the other seat class, it does help to make the plane lighter. Economy Class on the new Boeing 737 In Economy Class, the seats are still set up in a 3 to 3 pattern, but they are now a two-tone gray and blue. It still doesn't have a seat that can be adjusted, and the leather is thinner and lighter. There is no built-in TV screen like in Business Class, but there is a place to put your own device right above the tray table. Each seatback will have both USB-A and USB-C ports so that you can charge your devices. The IFEs have been replaced by MHS Studio, a web-based entertainment platform that doesn't require getting a separate app. When people connect their phones and computers to the Wi-Fi on board, they can watch movies, listen to music, listen to podcasts, read books and magazines, and play games. Also, with Temptations, the site lets you shop duty-free and the things you order will be brought right to your seat. You can get food on the plane through MH Studio if you get hungry. There is no word of Wi-Fi internet access, which would be great for travelers who want to stay in touch through instant messaging. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.